Good morning and welcome to Sonoma United Methodist Church, where all are welcome. I'm Pastor Marie, and each week I'm so excited to welcome all of you to our worship service this morning. I want to thank our musicians. That was a lovely, lovely prelude, and I just feel the Holy Spirit in this place this morning. I want to remind you to please mute your devices as we are streaming live from the sanctuary. Get excited. At a certain point in our service, you will be able to share your joys and your concerns out loud, but it's not time just yet. So please mute your devices. And when we get to those points in our service, if you're a little shy about speaking aloud, you may type your joys or your concerns in the chat. Our call to worship this morning comes from our hymnal number 844 and will be displayed on your screen. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from whence does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved. The Lord who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, Behold the one who keeps Israel, Israel will neither, neither slumber, slumber nor sleep. sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord, the Lord is, your, is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day. Nor the, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going, going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is O oh God, Our Help, from our hymnal, verses 1 through 4. We are already at the point in our service where we will share our joys with one another. Are there any joys to share this morning? If you have a joy and not shy about speaking, just unmute yourself and begin sharing your joy. And you still may type your joys in the chat. Today is my sweet cousin's 35th birthday. So happy, happy birthday to my wonderful cousin, Heather. For this joy, we say, thanks, thanks be, to God. be to God. I for want to express my joy for having so many good birthday parties uh, last week. Uh, it was amazing that everybody took time out of their lives to wear funny hats and say happy birthday to the 80 year old. For this joy, we say thanks Thank be to you. God. My joy is that I get to have um, Bailey here with me this morning to come to church with me. And that I get to see Yay. my up today <laughs> who I haven't seen in months. For this joy, we say thanks, thanks. be to God. Hi, Bailey. 
other joys. Don't shout them all at once. Are there We're any? only four days away from inauguration. <laughs> <laughs> for this joy and it will also be a prayer concern absolutely <laughs> thanks be to god Amen. thanks be to god are there any joys in the chat all right uh, i want to remind you to mute yourself if you're not speaking and we now uh move to the time where uh, we center ourselves and go to the throne of grace. It's time for to share our prayers and concerns with one another. So I invite you at home uh, to lift up the names of those uh, in your family, in your community, concerns of the world as we go to God in prayer. I want to remind you that there is power in prayer. And even if you are just visiting with us, uh, we want to be in prayer with you at this time. Wow, before we go into our centering song, I want to remind you that uh, you may type your prayer concerns in the chat. And after our centering song, if you would like, you may speak your concerns aloud. Our centering song this morning is Come and Find the Quiet Center. This morning, we continue to lift up prayers of healing for the following. Rich Hacker, Jean Hoffman, Frank Wines, Carol Winternitz, Loretta Thomas, Kevin Johnson, Ruth Hoagland, Jeff Severson, Cynthia Winthrop, and Melissa Shields and family. We also want to keep in prayer uh, bereaved families to include the family of Manashe Farusa, who was the vice chancellor of Africa University, which our denomination supports, and the Price and Thrower families. We also lift up essential workers, and as always, all prayers that have gone unspoken. Are there any other prayer requests? We would like um, prayers for our son, Patrick, who uh, was tested positive for COVID a few days ago. And uh, for our younger son, who's not feeling great today, who's uh, looking for a place to have a COVID test. So thank you. Lord. In your mercy, hear our prayers. 
I'd like to pray for uh, Fran Dyan, who uh, was a member of Congregational uh, Church here in uh, Sonoma Valley. Uh, she died on December 30th. And for Dick Ridenour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Well, I'd like to, uh, I'd like prayers for my nephew who was working in a restaurant in um, Portland. And um, they all walked out when the restaurant owner wasn't taking them the COVID seriously. And he's been having a hard time finding work. As my brother says, he doesn't, he doesn't want to go to work at uh, Amazon. So for, 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 for um, Lucas um, to find out. Lord, in your mercy, mercy, hear our prayers. Other prayer requests? Yes, I'd like prayers for our country in the um, Lord. very important days ahead. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I have a prayer request. Go ahead. Um, so please pray for our family. We lost our great grandmother, Hazel Bell Cotton, on Friday the 8th. She was 106 years old, but we still like prayers to continue our, on the legacy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Are there prayers in the chat? If there are no other prayer requests, let us take our hearts and minds and concerns to the Lord. Heavenly Father, help us to find that quiet center right now. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and grant us peace as we struggle with the concerns that have been lifted up. Help us to remember that you not only hear our prayers, but you answer them. For those who are sick, we stand in the gap and ask for healing. For those who are bereaved this morning, Father, we ask that you put your loving arms around them. And for all those who are just trying to live their best life, the only way they know how, we ask that you touch those folks and those who are just struggling to make meaning out of the life that we are living. Continue to remind us that you are with us, that you will never leave us or forsake us. Still our souls so that we may find that peace that passes all understanding. These and other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. 
Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Psalms, 139th chapter, verses 1 through 6 and verses 13 through 18. It reads, you have searched me, Lord, and you knew me. You knew when I sit down and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and by, you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Verse 13, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Brothers and sisters, this is the word of life. Thanks be to God. And we will now enjoy a musical selection. You are my. I will come to you in the silence. I will lift you from all your My voice, I claim you as my choice. Be still and know I am here. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. I will. This morning, it's titled 
fearfully wonderful. Fearfully wonderful. Today is Human Relations Sunday. United Methodists across the connection on this day come together to help connect the church and community by giving a special offering to support community and youth outreach programs. This effort is done through community developers programs, United Methodist Voluntary Services programs, and youth offender rehabilitation programs. Additionally, Human Relations Sunday calls United Methodists to recognize the right of all God's children in realizing their uniqueness as human beings in relationship to one another. Now this special Sunday just happens to be celebrated the Sunday before the national observance of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday and in recognition of the message that Jesus gave to the world while he was here on earth. All of God's children are important to the world that we live in. All of God's children are fearfully wonderful. Now, let me just say that you do not have to be a United Methodist to embrace the fact that human beings were created with great care and precision by the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for not only knowing us and anticipating our needs, but also for creating us fearfully and wonderfully. Help us to realize that all your children were created in the same manner, lovingly and for a unique purpose. As we remember the call to love one another, allow us to see each person as you do. A wonderful work of art. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scripture lesson this morning uh, initially calls us to consider two things off the top that God is omniscient and that he is omnipotent. For most of us, it is hard to imagine that God does not merely just exist, but that he knows all things and can do all things. Probably struggle with the part of saying that he knows all things. So either depending on where we are in our life, uh, what's going on, God knowing everything might not be a good thought. But for this morning, it is a good thing. One may read this text and derive that the writer of this prayer, who was David to some, most, is wrestling with something. Maybe the author is ashamed of some secret misconduct or thought. It could be that David found himself struggling with realizing his own self-worth. Something that I think we all can be challenged with from time to time. But again, for the purposes of today's lesson, let us consider another message that verses one through six and 13 through 18 could be offering. Instead of assuming that this prayer comes from the depths of a person in despair, what if this prayer was one of adoration and praise for comprehending, having an epiphany of sorts, that one significance to God and the world in which we live in? Why is it so difficult for us to accept the fact that we all are important to God and each other? We have been reminded of this reality this morning through this song. We all 
have been fearfully and wonderfully made. Each of us are carefully handcrafted with unconditional love. Maybe if we could somehow believe that our existence in this world is no accident and that God intentionally formed us, then we might be able to extend love and respect to all of God's children. What do you think? The change that we all crave and need to see in the world does not begin with everybody else. It begins with you. First John 3 and 11 says, for this is the message you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. On the eve of the day that the United States observes the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., it is heart-wrenching to acknowledge that the world is still challenged with so many things, especially racial injustice. How did we get to and remain in the space where some lives are considered more valuable than others? I didn't read it in my scripture that some lives are more important than others, but somehow we're in a time and space where some people believe that. Our collective differences have never mattered to God. He created us. Therefore, the way that we interact with each other should be based on the same love God extends to us. All human beings are fearfully wonderful. One of the things that I enjoyed pre-pandemic was traveling. I traveled extensively in the United States, but I've also had the awesome pleasure of traveling to so many countries outside of the U.S. as well. Visiting other places, I get really excited because I love learning about the history and the people and the sights and sounds are so exciting. But I'm always particularly amazed when I observe similarities that other cultures have in common with my own beliefs and customs. Maybe I should not be surprised. Learn from experience that if we think about it, human beings are more alike than different. Imagine that. What often keeps us divided as a people is the idea that we can only live harmoniously with folks who look like us, talk like us, think like us. But the truth is, is that we all have the innate ability to live in peace with everyone because we were all created the same fearlessly, wonderful. If we could just be like David and trust that the Lord knows us completely and knit us together in our mother's room fearfully and wonderfully, the world would indeed change for the better. Growing up, as the oldest of five girls in our home, I can tell you there was never a dull moment. There was lots of laughter, noise, joy, a little bit of fussing here and there. But one rule that was enforced by my parents and really reinforced by my mother in particular was that we could not be cruel to each other. We were not allowed to be mean or like Lucy on Charlie Brown, call each other blockheads. No, in our house, we had to be respectful to one another and show love to one another. 
Now, while this was the rule, I'm not going to pretend that it was easy. We made faces behind each other's backs and we gritted our teeth when we had to help each other. But like our heavenly father, seeing that my mother was always listening when we thought she was out of earshot. So eventually it became easier to handle each other with care. Oh yeah, we had disagreements, misunderstandings, but how we handled them was always with love. We learned early that our siblings were special and were to be treated as such. As we consider this lesson for us today, know that our Heavenly Father has a similar rule for us as well. All human beings are our sisters and brothers. We are required to interact with each other as God interacts with us. He created us fearfully wonderful. So therefore we ought to act like it. Our world is ever changing and it seems like just last year it changed, you know, decades in just a year. But even in this season, while it may appear that our hope is gone, we must keep the faith. Our living never ever is in vain. We must remember that we came to be on purpose. No one is an accident or an embarrassment or less than anyone else. We all are fearlessly wonderful and we have the ability to change the world. By not only acknowledging this, our fearfully and wonderfulness, but by making an effort to correct the injustices that we see each day. Before I became a pastor, yes, I had a life before pastorship. One of the duties that I had as a member of the organizational learning and effectiveness team was that I facilitated trainings. Uh, one in particular was one on cultural humility. Each time that I would end the presentation, I would always have my AV tech, because you know I like music, play Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror. In particular, the second verse of that song always spoke volumes to me. The lyrics are, I've been a victim of a selfish kind of love. It's time that I realize that there are some with no home, not a nickel to loan. Could it be really me pretending that they're not alone? A willow deeply scarred, somebody's broken heart and a washed out dream. They follow the pattern of the wind, you see, cause they got no place to be. That's why I'm starting with me. And at this point I would pull out a mirror. I was so dramatic. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways and no message could have been any clearer. If you wanna make the world a better place. Take a look at yourself and then make a change. And then I would try to moonwalk and get on my toes. And the group would go into laughter. But many afterwards would say, wow. It's hard to admit that the change that you're really looking for is within yourself. 
But remember that it's still possible because we are fearlessly wonderful. What an amazing world this will be when we look at ourselves and change the way that we view others. Let us start right now. We can do it today, it's not too late. Look in the mirror at your own reflection and recognize that the image staring back at you is fearfully wonderful. And so are the faces of others. In fact, when others look at us, they should absolutely see God. Amen. And now we have come already to the time in our service that is called offering time. Thank all of you for continuing to send in your pledges and your offerings to us. And if you have forgotten to do that this week, you can do it online at SonomaUMC.com. Also, if you're visiting us and would like to make a donation to our ministry, you may do it online as well. Let us give thanks to God for all the gifts that he has given to us. But more importantly, let us thank God for what we are able to give. Loving God, we thank you for the ability to give to your ministry. And we ask that the gifts be used to share the love of Christ throughout the world. Bless those who gave, bless those who wanted to give, but could not have the means. Help us to remember that we are fearfully wonderful. And in our effort to continue to live life as you would like us to live. Help us to remember to love. These blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing song this morning is an oldie but a goodie, a mighty fortress.
this morning are as follows. Uh, please remember all of the ministry opportunities. And I pray that if you have not been involved in any activities last year, that you would join some of these ministries this year. Uh, we have the Dynamic Garden crew on Tuesdays at 9 a.m. doing an awesome job keeping our church looking beautiful. Uh, Thoughtful Thursdays, tea with Pastor Marie at 9 and 6 p.m., having a special discussion uh, this month. So join us and tell a friend. Uh, the prayer shawl ministry is ongoing, as well as our spiritual action group. And the mighty men of God meet the first Fridays of the month at 7 o'clock p.m. We have parish partners, the prayer chain, our worship team. Like to uh, give special uh, thanks to everyone for your prayers while I was away, uh, celebrating the life of my father, Jonathan Price, in Inglewood this week, as well as uh, the life of my aunt, Pamela Price Thrower. Uh, tough week, but I could feel your prayers, and both um, services were a wonderful and beautiful tribute. I'd also like to thank our praise team, our stream team, our worship team, and our musicians under the direction of Jen McFadden for our wonderful music uh, this morning in our service. It's nothing like music uh, to help us as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And with that, I believe there are no other announcements. And so... We, we've come to the end of our worship time together. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. May God bless you with the courage to speak truth and love, to pray for the provoker of injustice, and to walk with wisdom and grace as you advocate for the oppressed. And don't forget, we are all fearfully wonderful in the eyes of God. Go in peace, stay safe, stay hopeful, and remember to love one another. See you next week. Mm -hmm.